Okay, so we're going to start chapter 10, verse 18. We're going to start Degel Machne Rubin, it's the subject tribe of Rubin traveled, Valtzva O, Elitzur Ben Shteor. And the person in charge was Elitzur, the son of Shteor. Valtzva Mate Bene Shimon was Shlumiel Ben Suri Shaddai. Valtzva Mate Bene God was Eliasaf Ben Duel. Vinasua Katim. No say Mikdash and the Kahatim who were this is the tribe of Kahat who were the ones carrying the temple, carrying the sanctuary. They came as a Mishkan at Boam and they would establish the Mishkan until uh, before their arrival. So their job was to establish the Mishkan. Rashi says No say Mikdash No say Dvarim Amukudashim. The people of Kahat, their tribe was to carry the the things that were sacred. They kimu as a mishkan, and they would establish the mishkan. B'nei Gershon, b'nei Merari, Rashi says, the sons of Gershon and Merari, shayukod lahem, who would precede the sons of Kaas, would be masash ne degoim, by a journey of two divisions. You remember this guy, Seth? I do. Ha'yimakimen as a mishkan kishaya anan shochim. They would establish the mishkan when the cloud of glory came to rest. The Simon Hachaniya near Ah, the Degel Machane Yehuda, and the sign of the encampment would appear at the division of the camp of Judah. The Haim Chonim, and then they would encamp. The Adayim Pnei Kahas Pnei Machreim, while the sons of Gaz would still be coming behind them. Im Shnei Degalim Achronim with the two S divisions. Are you Bnei Gershon and Bnei Merari Mekimin Es Hamishkan? And then the sons of Gershon and Merari would establish a Mishkan. And when the sons of Kahas would arrive, they would find it fully built. So the basically we're being told that the Gershon and Merari would be the ones to build the Mishkan, and then the Bnei Kahas would bring the stuff into the Mishkan. They would bring the ark, the table, the menorah and the altars. Those who built the table, the tabernacle would build it at Terem Shabanekas, prior to the people of Kahas arriving. I want to say what I heard from Rabbi Samson Rafael Hirsch, that it says, we did this in yesterday's Rashi, that they, we did this in the Psukim, that they couldn't travel anywhere until the cloud moved. When the cloud moved, then they traveled. And, and then when the cloud stopped, they had to stop. So and then when the cloud stopped, they had to build the entire, the entire Mishkan. And when the cloud stopped, they had to uncamp, build the Mishkan, set up their camp. They had basically lost their, they had no control. They didn't know, like let's say it was really a bad place. It was hot, it was, it was the wrong place. They had to stay there until God told them to leave. And they had to have such a mysterious nefesh that they would take their mishkan and they would build it. And then one day later, they could be going. They, they completely submitted themselves to God's plan to travel. It was only once a year, right? No, they, they, they camped whenever they went. They, they were 42 different stops, but we don't know how often they stayed at each place. So they could be staying in one place for 40 years and the other places they could be going every two weeks. So the point is, that everything was out of their control. And in retrospect, we know that there were only 42, but we don't, at the time, they didn't know any of that. So then, uh, then they, uh, yes. So according to this, does that mean that they did or didn't do the Tamid during the time in the desert? Meaning, did they, did they at least have the time to, to prepare the two sheep every single day, you know? I think the Gemara discusses that. I forgot what the Gemara says. Why didn't they bring it? Why do you think they didn't bring it? If they're getting up and moving and putting. Oh, the day that they moved, would they bring the tummy? I don't know. We have to look that up. Okay. Then the, the tribe of Ephraim would travel. And then it was Elishama ben Amihud. And then it would be the tribe of. Uh, Menashe was Gamliel Pedatsur, and the tribe of Benjamin was Abidam Ben Gidoni. Menasa Degel Machane Ben Dan, and then came the camp of Dan. Maase for Koa Machanot. Their job was to be the gatherer for all the camps. Mitzvosam, the gatherer for all their camps. Valtzva O Achiezer Ben Amishadai. 
And then there was a tribe of Dayim, and their job was to gather up everything. What does it mean that they were the gatherers? Let's see what Rashi says. Rashi quotes the Talmud Yerushalmi. The tribe of Dan was the most numerous. Therefore, it would travel at the rear. Whoever would lose something, the tribe of Dan would return it to him. Their job was to be the mass safe. Their job was to collect all the lost articles. Their job is to collect the lost articles. That's very beautiful. Why do you assume that people lost articles? What? Why do you things all the time? You have three million people, you know how many of them are going to leave? The flip flops. <laughs> no, but they have the school. <laughs> Thank God they didn't have cell phones. <laughs> yeah, everybody's losing something. Isman the Amar. And there's some say that they would travel like a box. And they derive it from the fact that the way they camped was the way they traveled. So the, the tribe of Dan was on the north side of the camp and they had such an overflow that they were able to gather the lost oracles. It's the Amri. And they would travel like a beam. Some say they traveled like a box, some say they traveled like a beam. He, they were in a rear at the end of the tribes, like so a straight line. The whole length yeah. of the whole width, the whole every tribe. That's huge. The end. They were the end. Yeah. Ah. No, but I know that at the end, but in order for them to yeah. collect everything, they, they were flying. That's what it was. Right. Yeah. But some say that they were like a box. Uh, and that there was an overflow, and then they went on either side. But some said that there was a, like a beam. Okay, then it. So who was from the tribe of Don was uh, Shimshon. So then verse twenty six. And then was These are the journeys of the children of Israel, and they journeyed. What that seems, but on that day they nasu, on that day they journeyed. So they, they journeyed on that day. And now we say, hello, Bill. Vayomer Moshe, then Moshe said, Lechovav ben Reuel amidjani, Chosein Moshe, Hello, Amitai. Had a good day? Yeah. Makes me so happy to hear. You know this guy? He's the Shadchan who brought us together. Yeah. We're studying the Rashi, so you might want to get a Chumash. You know where the Chumashim are? Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Stop. Yeah, you got it. So Moshe said to Chovav, the son of Reuel, Amidjani, who was the father of Moshe, we're traveling to the place where God told us, where Hashem said to us that I'll give to you, come with us, will be good for you, because God has spoken good about Israel. So first of all, just like to point out before we read the Rashi, that this is further proof that Har Sinai was a Midian because Chovev was, was, he was the Midianite. And so they are, they haven't yet left the Sinai wilderness. And that's where Chovev is. So they were in Midian. Also, when I was in Northern Saudi Arabia, Yisro is the figure there. He's there, he's there, George Washington. He is there, you know, there, mythical national figure. I don't know, mythical is right. The Yisra is one of four prophets that are named in the Quran. There's only four prophets named in the Quran. Yisra is the biggest figure there. So they have Yisra's, they have the well. Yisra, they have the burial grounds of Yisra. They have, they have all the caves of Yisra. The, he is the legend of Yisra fills the entire desert of Northern Saudi Arabia. That's Midian. So, He's also really the only non-Jew to reach prominence in a good way in the Torah. 
every other non-Jew in the Torah is at best like neutral. Like Avi Melech is terrible. He kidnaps. Uh, yeah. He kidnaps Sarah. Noah. Noah is Noah is pre-Jewish. It's not you know, like Noah and Adam were taken out of this situation. Noah was prior. Noah was a righteous man. But Noah Noah was a big tzaddik. But Noah was before Abraham. You can't count him. So I'm just saying, once once the Jews begin, everybody is at best neutral, except for Yisrael. Except no no leave aside Noah. Except for, Noah is leave aside Noah. Except for Yisrael. Except for Yisrael. And Yisrael was the Midianite. He's Moshe Mechutin. He he gives a good idea. Uh, he also his his descendants are the one who helps Moshe, uh, who helps Ben Israel defeat Sisra. So Yisro is a hero for the Jewish people, and he's a, he's a, also a hero in the Quran. You know the prophets in the Quran. So Yisro is the figure that spans religions, and he was the leader of Midian, and that's where Har Sinai was. So, and he has seven names. So, you know, if I wasn't a rabbi, which I am, and if I was like going to be like um, cynical, which I'm not, the cynical academic would say, Yisro is like an amalgamation of all these priests of Midian, you know, he like these composite of all these figures. But I, that's not what I mean. We have the Midrash says, because one time his Moshe's father-in-law is called Yisro, and here he's called Chovav, which is it? Isn't he also called Ruel? That's what he says. He so also how called Ruel. Chovav, but also the son of Ruel. So that's why he says, Chovav, who Yisro? He is Yisro, uh, she says. As it says, me, Bnei Chovav, Jose Moshe. Right, so Ruel is also Yisro. Right. So how could it be Chovav? Who's that's right. She's going to dress it. If this is Yisro, why does it say that Tavono el Ruel Avian? Why is he called Ruel their father? Well, you're asking Rashi's question. Melamed Shetinoko, so this is Rashi's answer. Tinokes Koran, Via Vian, Abba. The children call their father's father, father. So they claim to Ruel their father, but really it was their grandfather. Ruel was their grandfather, but they called him their father. Sometimes children will call their grandfather Papa. Papa. But Shemos Harbeya Yuo. He had a lot of names, Rashi says. Yisrael Shem Sheyiter Parsha Achas Torah. He's called Yisrael because they added a Parsha in the Torah for him. Chovav Al Shem Shechiva is a Torah of the Kulu. Uh, and all of them are because he loved the Torah. How does that um, solve the fact that he's. But wouldn't that just mean that he was. The grandfather and the father in law of Moshe? How does that make sense? No, his name, Ru'ua was the grandfather in law of Moshe. Okay. So that's the a grandfather Rashi. Grandfather in law. Yeah, Ru'ua, but according Yisra. to this Rashi, was Yisra's father. And why does it say they came to their father, Ru'ua, to tell us that he came that because they called their father, but they called their grandfather father? Like a father. Yeah. They called him father. They called him father, but he wasn't. Wow. So he was their grandfather, but they called their grandfather father. So that's a common thing Rashi's telling us. Was there ever Rashi made the point of telling us that the tribe of Don collected all this stuff? And then, right. Does it ever get into how that was redistributed in any way? Does the Gemara talk about like it's lost, right? So you have to do it. Yeah, that's Rashi. Rashi. Hefker, is it like that's a lot to give back to a lot of people? Like, it's, <laughs> I just thinking about the idea of having all that stuff and then kind of everybody's going to claim that it's there. It's like, is there any discussion about it? Anymore? Well, the, well, we have to um, right, we have to see Rashi's source, but the, I'm sure it's the Gemara. The Gemara talks about it, but here in Rashi says specifically that whenever they find it, then Don would return it. So that's the second chapter of Amitzia. It talks about it's like the first Gemara we learn the that they. So Elamitzia is what's given up. Yeah. No, it doesn't have a simon on it. Yeah, that's a good. I mean, can you imagine? It's just an enormous amount of stuff every day. Just practically thinking about the fact that they're collecting all this, and then how do you even attempt to get that back into the process? And I guess I'll look. I mean, they probably had like a sign they put up. Once a year, I spread it out. Even once a year, they I don't know that they so okay, but okay. So then, 
Then he says, no, Simenachnu Amakom. So Moshe Rabbeinu says to his father-in-law, we're traveling to the place, no, Simenachnu Amakom, we're traveling to the place that God told uh, that God told us, I'm going to give to you. No, Simenachnu Amakom, miyad, very soon. In three days, Anu Nechnasim Aretz. So it's such a sad Rashi. They were expecting to go into Israel within three days. They were, they were a three-day journey from the land of Israel. By the way, you know how long it takes you to get from Mount Sinai driving to Israel? Uh, driving three days? Two hours now. <laughs> you can go to a lot, and it's a two-hour drive from Mount Sinai in northern Saudi Arabia. And some of the people in our group did that. But that's only a lot. It's not biblical Israel, so you have to go up. Okay, so it's basically a three-day journey from there. With good roads. No, and you go on the camels. You go on the camels, you're there in three days. Three days. What? A camel doesn't take more than three days. No, it's the, no, it's very close. You're very close. You're right there. Very close. Yeah, it's not. It wasn't. No, no, no. It's not far at all. It's not far. It's so. It's really right there. It's just. So the camel makes it twenty miles per day. I guess. Yeah. Hundred miles per day. Yeah. Hey, well, you're not three hundred miles away. A, cam a camel runs 75 kilometers an hour, which is about 60 miles an hour. Uh, an hour. But uh, I mean, I don't know how much people, it's going to go, but it's... it's yeah, most people traveling don't run with the camels. So. Yeah, they're not going to run. But anyway, go on. But the camels in Saudi Arabia, we use the camel to get my desk up the mountain. We put the desk on the top of the camel, and the camel carried the desk up there. And that's how I was able to write a Torah on the top of the mountain. So it says, we travel to the place. For so this first journey, they were traveling now with their intent to go into the land. They sinned right away, but the people were complaining. They complained, they said, we're tired and the journey. I mean, they mashitev Moshe atzmoimahem. So why did Moshe say we are journeying. No sim anachnu. Moshe said, we're traveling. Moshe thought he was going to enter in. Such a sad verse. He says, we're traveling. Moshe thinks he's going to enter in. We're traveling to the place that God told us, and they don't make it. So Yisro says here, there's also another possibility, by the way, and Moshe, there is another possibility. If you don't adopt the Midrash, it's possible, you know, going back to Moshe's question, if you take the literal text that Moshe married Reuel's daughter and he also married Reuel's granddaughter, mm -hmm. that would be the literal text. Reuel and Chovah the Midianite, he married both. And then he married another woman at the end of the parasha. It says he took a Kushat woman. So that would seem to indicate that he married multiple women. Mm -hmm. That he married multiple, multiple women, already three. And he left Sipora. That's why Yisro takes Sipora back to Moshe, because he had abandoned her. That's just the literal text. But, but we follow Rashi. Rashi doesn't say that. Yeah, so, oh, Larry, how you doing? Good. He lost to Jerusalem 197 miles, and the camel can go between 25 and 30 miles. So you can figure that out. Okay. From Elat to Jerusalem is how much? 197 miles. So 30, 40 miles. 25 to 30 miles. Okay. So, well, well, you say they're going all the way to Jerusalem. They don't have to get all the way to Jerusalem. We just have a dog. Just By the way, they can go a different way. <laughs> also, they were traveling on the wings of eagles. Oh, uh, that's yeah. Yeah. No, they, they, they traveled very speedily. That's what the, that's what the Torah says, what the Midrash says. And they traveled very quickly. So that solves that problem also. And so he says, <laughs> This is, I'm not going. I'm only going to my land and to my birthplace. He says, I'm going home. He says, I'm going whether for my property or for my family. He, he's saying, Basically, he's going to stay in Midjan. But Yomer, Moshe says, Al not Moshe says, don't abandon us. Moshe says, you know our encampments in the wilderness. You shall be for us, for our guide, for our eyes. 
Shia, you know this boy? <laughs> he says, you know where we are in the wilderness, be for us for our guide. So they're begging, they're begging Mo, they're begging Yisro to be our guide. Al Nat Hazobosan. They're begging him. Aina El Lashon Bakasha. It's an expression of request. Shaloyomru, that we don't want Moshe requests that Yisro say so that people don't say, Loniskayar Yisro Mechiba. They don't want Moshe said Yisro should say so people don't say, Yisro did not convert out of love of God. Savura Yashish Gerem Chelot Paris. Moshe says, I don't want people to say, you only converted because you thought you're going to get a portion in the land. Achshav Sharash Elam Chelot. But now they see you have no portion. He says, I, it doesn't look good. People are going to think you only joined us to get a portion. Now that you see you're not getting a portion, you're leaving. But Moshe begs him, You know our encampments in the wilderness. It's appropriate for you. You know our encampments. You know, you know what we've done. You've seen the miracles. You should stay. Means like, in as much as you know. And then he says, Vaisa one and you have up. Oh. He's saying, Rashi says it differently than when I said. He's saying, You have been our eyes, you've been our guide, Lashon Avar. You've been our guide. Davar Acher, alternatively, Lashon Atid. In the future, Moshe is saying, Be our guide. Kol Davar Vedavar, Shetaleme Nenu, Tiemi Iri Nenu. Every single thing. That will be hidden from her eyes, you will enlighten us. Davar acher, shet hey chaviva leinu, you'll be as dear to us, ke galgali neinu, like our own eyeball. That says, vahavta masagir. So either he's saying, we're going to love you, or he's saying, you're going to give us good advice, or you have been our guide. He's begging him to stay. Does Yisrael stay? Does Yisrael stay? Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Why do you say that? He wanted to home. No, but why do you say he went home? On what basis do you say that? What did you say, Mo? They traveled. That's referring to the B'nai Israel. What did Yisro do? Well, now that he saw that they do not have a portion, this Rashi said. Rashi says that he. Oh no no! So that's the that's the commentary. But but right. But we haven't done that Rashi yet. But but the text itself, the text itself doesn't say if Yisro stayed or 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 left. The text is ambiguous. <laughs> you get in the eyes every time somebody looks in. The text is ambiguous. Why do you think the text is? It's very, it's very unusual. Moshe asks, and Yisro doesn't respond. What do we think? So then it says, you mean he responded, but then it doesn't say what he did. What goodness did they benefit him? Amru, the sages say, Kashai Yisro Machalkin Esaaretz, when the children of Israel were dividing up the land, Ayadush Nasha Yericho. There was a rich pasture ground of Yericho, which was 500 Amos by 500 Amos. And they set aside from being apportioned. They said, whoever is going to build the base of Mikdash will have it. In the meantime, Yisro's descendants had it. Yonadav ben Rechat. As it states, so basically, this Rashi seems to indicate that he did stay because he merited to have this, that Yisro's descendants stayed in the area where the temple was until such time as the temple was built. What do you think of that, Larry? It's an interpretation. As Rashi. Ah, there you go, Jeff. It says it's a three-day journey. Oh, wait, wait, I, I skipped a pasuk. If you go with us, the God that God does for us, which is the temple, will be good. Will be in your possession in the meantime. 
and they travel from the mountain of God, that's Mount Sinai, so the ark traveled before them. So it was a three-day distance. A three-day journey they could do in one day. So, so basically, they traveled three days in one day. The ark paved the path. Okay, we have to pray, but we'll just do this last Rashi. Varon Brit Hashem, no sale if they am Shoshayamim, Zaron. This is the ark. I would say, my am with Melchamo, which will go out to battle. We both shiver Luchos Minachem, and the broken pieces of the tablets were placed in it. The Makdim with Nam, Dero Shoshayamim, the ark would go ahead of them by three days, but Takain Lam Makom Chania to make a place to encamp. Verse 34. Oh, let's have a mincha at this point. We'll have a mincha. We'll stop our recording. I just want to tell you this story. I just, uh, Rabbi.